So question five was, we were asked to, let's see, show the mechanism for the acid-catalyzed hydrolysis of the enamine shown below. So it's an enamine. Uh, hopefully we remember that we make enamines from ketones and secondary amines, and uh, maybe that way we could realize that the product of this hydrolysis is going to be, in this case, an amino ketone because it's a cyclic enamine. Uh, the carbonyls could be right there, but we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll do it uh, from the start. So it's a hydrolysis and it's acid catalyzed. So the first thing we want to think about is the fact that uh, we have water and we have uh, acid. Now, I suppose the thing that we're going to think about is a nitrogen is fairly basic and we can protonate our nitrogen. And if we're to do that, we would end up getting this species right here. But if we look at this species and what would we do next, there's not a lot of places to go. Uh, there's water around. What's water going to react with? There's, there's really no electrophilic carbon here that water can react with. So we kind of get stuck and we have no place to go. And the only thing we can do is use our water to remove the proton from there. And in fact, under these conditions with a catalytic amount of acid, most of the protons are going to be sitting there. That is going to be the major protonated species. But this thing itself can donate its proton, uh, act as the acid. So instead of protonating here, I need a pair of electrons. Uh, well, yes, I do. So let's put a pair of electrons there. We're going to draw... Put a pair of electrons on our nitrogen. We can start this reaction. There we go. Now we have our pair of electrons. I'm going to start this reaction from the electrons, lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. When I do this, I now have to get rid of one bond. I'm going to get rid of this carbon, carbon double bond by using that pair of electrons now. Just grab a proton. Now let's not forget that protons don't exist as H+. This is in an aqueous system, so it's either going to be H3O+, or as we just discussed, it's probably just sitting on another amine, and that's our proton source. But we can protonate this species, and when we protonate this species, we get something that looks like this. Now notice we have the positive charge on the nitrogen here. We can draw a resonance structure for this compound where we have a positive charge on the carbon. So that's now an electrophilic carbon. So now we have an electrophilic carbon, and we have, uh, it's quite an electrophilic carbon, and we have a nucleophile. Our water can now act as the nucleophile, and we just attack that electrophilic carbon. When we do that, uh, we have to break this nitrogen-carbon double bond and promote the electrons up onto the nitrogen. So we now get... Uh, the species here. And let's think about what we're going to do with that species in terms of electrons. Well, what we're going to do is we're just, something's going to come along, pick up this proton, and it's going to float around to the other side and put the proton on that nitrogen. We just have a proton shift. That's all that's going to happen. I'm not going to draw the arrows for that.
Oops. Something wrong with this species. Let me see what's wrong. No, this is good. Sorry, uh, I really don't like the arrows in ChemDraw, so I like to draw all my arrows in PowerPoint. I find it easier. So, uh, we now have moved our proton from here. These reactions are all reversible, by the way. I haven't been using reversible arrows, but they are. And we just move a proton from the oxygen over to the nitrogen, and now we're set up to push some arrows. Remember, we always start a pair of electrons. In this case, it's awkward, but we're going to start here at a lone pair of electrons on oxygen. And we're going to push them to make a carbon-oxygen double bond. When we do that, we have to uh, break this carbon-nitrogen bond. We could break the carbon-phenyl bond, but that would make no sense because then we'd have a very reactive um, phenyl anion which we don't have to do. Uh, we can break this bond and throw them electrons up onto the nitrogen. When we do that, we get this species. It's not very pretty the way I've drawn it, but this is our amino ketone. There we go. So now we have basically our finished product, and all we have to do is remove that final proton. When we remove that proton, the electrons that were in the oxygen proton bomb are, bond are going to get promoted onto the oxygen as a lone pair of electrons. And uh, we get our final product, and notice what I've done here now, just for purposes of keeping track, this is now the amino ketone product. And uh, although we're showing H3O plus form, what I'm trying to show here is that our hydrogen ion, our hydrogen cation, is reformed in the final uh, step. So we only need a catalytic amount of acid. And... Uh, we used one molecule of water right here, so this is a hydrolysis reaction. It's the reverse of the reaction of a secondary amine with a ketone to form an enamine. Again, remember, all these reactions are reversible. We could make this reaction go this way by adding water. We can, I'm sorry, by uh, removing water because water would form in the this last step if we were going in the opposite direction. But in this direction, it's easy to go just by swamping it with water.